You're about to see a rare proof set that was hidden for over a hundred years. It is now in the possession of my friend Russ from Harlan J. Burke. Hello, silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for silver education, acquisition, and entertainment. Hey, the place to be is the Gary Sportsman's Club, the site of my monthly coin club meeting. Coin collectors, this one's for you. All right, take three, man. Hey, uh, our coin club meeting just ended, and uh, you brought something to share with the uh, coin club members that was just very impressive. And so why don't you start and uh, just, hey, let my audience know what you've got there in front of you. Sure. So this is a really, really special set. This is a 1906 U.S. Philippines administration proof set. So basically, um, the United States acquired the Philippines as a territory in 1898 from the Spanish. Um, so this is kind of our first um, dipping our toes into colonialism. Um, and so once the U.S. takes over the Philippines from the Spanish, you know, we have to issue our own currency there. So what they did is they started a new currency kind of based on the old Spanish currency as well. So this is actually um, right in front of me. This is a peso. Um, and then you have, um, in denomination, 50 centavo, 20 centavo, 10, 5, 1, and half centavo. Basically, what you have here, um, these are all made at the United States Mint in Philadelphia. American-made pesos. American-made pesos. Um, <laughs> they actually say on the reverse, United States of America, they have the federal eagle. Um, for all intent and purposes, this is a U.S. coin. Their reverse are, is designed by Charles Barber, who is the acting or is the the mint director at the time, um, the chief engraver, and these occupy a very unique place in U.S. Um, U.S. history and you know foreign history as well because they really are U.S. coins. Um, what's really neat is the peso and the half are actually struck on. Um, U.S. coin blanks. So this is the exact same size and composition of a Morgan silver dollar, and this is the exact same size and composition of a Barber half dollar. So they really are U.S. coins. Um, you know, they we, we struck these from 1903 to 1906 uh, in the big sizes, and then after, after that, they went to a, a smaller size. They kind of devalued them because silver went up and you know, you can't really have something that is on par with the U.S. when, you know, the Philippines is still a pretty poor territory at this time. Mm -hmm. um, and they made them in Philadelphia, um, San Francisco. Later in World War II, they made them in Denver as well as San Francisco. Um, but what's really cool is they opened a branch mint, the only branch mint that the United States Mint ever opened outside the continental U.S. And that, and that was actually in Manila. So there is a U.S. mint in Manila um, starting in the 20s, and um, you know, it's just a really, really cool set. This, How'd you acquire them? So this set came out of a deal that we bought. That is a, uh, it was a raw deal. Um, it's a, a very original collection. Um, the collector that built it um, was born in the 1860s. He passed away sometime in the 1940s, and the collection has just sat basically since then. Wow. Um, we acquired it. And this was completely raw. None of it was slabbed. Um, and we were able at the ANA, um, the World's Fair of Money that just passed, we were able to walk these through PCGS and we came back with some really, really fantastic grades. Um, the peso, which is the star of the show, is graded proof 66. Um, it's not the finest known. There is a 68 plus that exists and a couple of 67s. Um, but it is absolutely stunning. Um, it has amazing, all the coins are amazingly colored, amazing toning. Um, you know, and that has a lot to do with how they were stored, where they were stored. Um, what kind we, of mintages are we looking at on the peso? Yeah, so basically, um, they only made about 500 sets. So the mintage on all of these, it really is 500 coins. And a lot of them were melted in the 30s, in the 20s and 30s, really, because this was a significant amount of silver. Um, so most of them were, were melted. The survival estimate is maybe in the low 200s. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, speaking of raw deals, uh, the trading ratio was two to one. You were yeah. explaining that? Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, the, the exchange rate was, was kind of a raw deal for the Filipinos. Um, the exchange rate was two to one. So theoretically, you could take a Morgan dollar that 
was the exact same size and weight as this peso, take it and get two of these pesos for the price of your one Morgan dollar, um, which is one of the other reasons that they really started debasing the currency after 1906. Um, they went to, instead of nine, uh, you know, 90% silver, they went to like 80% silver and um, everything got smaller. Um, mm. They also eliminated the half centavo, which is, you know, a half cent. Really didn't make sense in commerce, mm. but um, the Spanish had issued something similar and so they tr kind of tried to keep that theme. It's the same with, um, there's, rather than a 25 cent piece, there's a 20 centavo piece and that's a holdover from the old Spanish system as well. Mm. Okay. And what is uh, the fate of these uh, coins here? Uh, where are they headed? So more than likely, these are gonna go to auction. Um, we don't know exactly when or where yet, but this set um, is very important. It's a set that has never been seen. Sets like these, um, generally, they change hands you know, a few times, and people know about the sets, um, especially real diehard collectors, like you know, real diehard Filipino collectors. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a brand new set. No one has seen this set in probably over a hundred years at this point. Wow, that's amazing. Um, so this will probably make a pretty big splash. It's a very important set. It's a very gorgeous, well-matched set, and it's original. Nothing's been messed with. Nothing's been enhanced. Nothing's been dipped out. Um, it really is a very, very important set for you know the specialist that's a Filipino collector, or even just a generalist who you know, is looking to, to put something together like this. Well, who knows? Maybe Manny Pacquiao will watch this video and uh, decide he wants that for his personal collection. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, hey, Russ, I appreciate the time staying after the coin club meeting. Uh, and uh, hey, by the way, speaking of the Goodfellows uh, coin club, you're going to be at the upcoming show, correct? Yeah, uh, September 3rd um, at St. Matthias. Um, it starts, at, and that's in Crown Point, Indiana. Starts at 9 a.m. I will be there all day. Um, I'm gonna have a bunch of goodies there with me from our storefront. Um, I'll have some bullion, so I will have some stuff for you stackers out there. Mm -hmm. um, I'll obviously have some rare coins. I'll have all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm gonna be doing even some free verbal appraisals, things like that. Okay. Um, it's a great show, it's a fun time. So if you can make it out there and you're in this neck of the woods, you absolutely should. Okay, well I am gonna go there early uh, to help you set up and uh, maybe uh, peruse a little bit before the general public uh, comes in. And, uh, uh, but either way, I'll be there. If anybody wants to meet me, come to St. Matthias on the 3rd. All right, thanks, Russ. Thanks, Steve. Hey, special thank you to my channel members who support my efforts to bring you these videos. And thank you, the viewer, for watching. At the end of each of my uh, coin club meetings, there is an auction. And uh, hey, take a look and see what I purchased at the auction. I won this uh, for a $6 bid. I almost got it at three, but I uh, picked it up for six bucks. It is a cool old banknote. And hey, we've been talking about those pesos from, Philippine, from the Philippines. This is uh, five pesos from Mexico, the Banco de Sonora. And take a look at the beautiful artwork on that American-made banknote, believe it or not.